Today's video is not sponsored. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Erin and I like to do all things crochet, knitting, and fiber art related. So I have a couple things on my to-do list to do today. I hope you guys like my new little setup. Jordan got a new light fixture so I can start adding some, you know, colors to the background. But it's been kind of a while since I've done any kind of yarn haul or yarn update. And I actually have a couple orders in that I need to take care of by this weekend actually. So I have about three days to get these projects done. But yeah, I figured today could just be like another crochet with me. It's been quite a while since you guys sat down and crocheted something fun and relaxing with me. So I thought we'd start off today's video with a mini tiny yarn haul yarn update. And like I just said, I do have a couple custom orders to get to this weekend. So this is what that yarn is for. Let's go ahead and bring everything out of the bag. But I'm actually really excited because these next custom orders are going to be for my famous balaclava. I've gotten a lot better at not saying baklava. But yeah, I'm really excited because I have to make a couple custom order balaclavas for like a friend of a friend. So I've picked up some yarn over at Michael's. They were very specific about the vibe and the customness that they wanted these balaclavas to be. So first and foremost, I picked up two different skeins of the Loops and Thread Impeccable yarns. You guys have heard me rave about this kind of yarn here on my channel for like the last few weeks. And this is actually the same exact colorway that I made my very first balaclava from scratch from. So as you guys can see here, when this yarn is worked up, it's mainly all black and then you do get a bunch of these like little flecks and specks of gorgeous color. So this is essentially the project that I will be working on these next few days. The only challenge with this is for these balaclavas, they actually want the entire face to be completely covered up and the only part that they want exposed is the eye area. So yeah, I actually myself have not made a balaclava yet that is fully encased except for the eye portion. So this is going to be like my little task, my little struggle, if you will. But I have faith in myself that I can kind of figure out a new pattern and get it looking to their liking. And first and foremost, what I love so much about this yarn is that it is my favorite number four worsted or iron weight yarn. Not too thick and definitely not too thin. I would definitely classify this myself as a standard worsted weight yarn. And if I'm not wrong, I believe that this yarn is 97% acrylic and 3% other fibers. So it's mainly an acrylic yarn. You guys know that here on my channel, acrylic worsted weight yarns are kind of like my go-to. They're my bread and butter and for a very long time I wasn't really buying the loops and thread impeccable yarn because way back years ago it used to be very scruffy and rough it didn't feel very comfortable on the skin at all definitely a yarn that I used to never even look at in the aisles and then over the last few months I have been noticing that Michael's loops and thread yarn has really stepped up their game I believe one of my subscribers told me that they changed their manufacturing country so yeah I guess now by changing their manufacturer to India the yarn is so much more squishy and comfortable and honestly for the price that they list it at, at Michael's I believe this was like $3.99 for one skein. It is by far one of the most touchably soft yarns I have felt in stores and again it's so freaking affordable I can't pass it up so Loops and Thread is definitely a brand that I want to recommend to you guys if you guys are shopping on a budget. It's also listed with 190 yards or three ounces of yarn so you get about 174 meters of yarn. They also recommend you using a five millimeter crochet hook and I believe that is the crochet hook that I used myself to make this previous balaclava so I'm right on point I'm using the right size hook. I just went ahead and grabbed a second ball of yarn just to make sure that I was going to have enough. So this will definitely get me to one whole balaclava and I should have a ton of yarn left over just to mix in with any other scrappy yarn project that I want to throw this into. But yeah, Loops and Thread Impeccable Yarn. I'm not sponsored by them at all. You guys are always asking. I just genuinely really love just the colorway, the texture, how it feels how it works up. And of course, I know you guys are all wondering, but I have worn this black balaclava a handful of times and it still has yet to pill on me. It's in a really great condition. I hope you guys can see here. There's really no fuzziness, no pilling. 
it's really standing the test of time. So that is the first yarn that I picked up. And then secondly, the next yarn that I picked up for another balaclava, of course you guys already guessed it, it's going to be another fan subscriber favorite. It is the Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn. As you guys can see here, it is more of like a deeper charcoal color, but it does have a little bit of black mixed in throughout the yarn so it does kind of kick up that charcoal effect just a little bit so it does kind of have like a little bit of this dual tone color to it you guys have seen me use lion brand wool ease a ton of times on my channel if you guys did see one of my more recent videos i did use the lion brand wool ease thick and quick to make that beautiful chunky crochet beanie. I think by far it is one of the best wool options that you can pick up at Michael's or Joann's. So here I am again, just highly recommending this yarn. And another thing that I really like about this Wool Ease yarn is that it's actually 80% acrylic and 20% wool. So I'm actually a really huge advocate for using yarns that have a mixture of fabrics in there like this acrylic wool mix. As you guys know, wool is a really great temperature or thermal regulator. So I know that using a wool mix yarn to make a balaclava is going to be perfect because it's going to help you regulate your temperature, keep you very warm and snugly and cozy inside the balaclava. But at the same time, if this was a 100% wool, I feel like you could overheat really easily. It might regulate you a little bit too much might get you a little bit too sweaty. So I like using this Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn just because with that extra acrylic yarn in there, you're not gonna get too hot and too sweaty. So it's kind of like the right balance, the right mixture of warm style yarn, if that makes any sense to you guys. But some other quick information I can give you about the Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn is that it is a number six super bulky yarn. So as you guys can see here, this yarn is nice and thick, nice and chunky. Although they do state this as a number six super chunky or super bulky yarn, I myself would classify this one a little bit more as like a number five. And with this number six super bulky yarn, they do recommend that you use a nine millimeter crochet hook. I believe that when I made previous items with this Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn, I actually don't have a nine millimeter hook. So I just sized up to a number 10 millimeter crochet hook and it seemed to work up just fine for me. And then just the last few things that I wanna tell you about this Lion Brand Wool Ease yarn is that one skein is six ounces or 170 grams, which means you're gonna get about 106 yards with this one skein. So pretty good. I believe I paid $7.99. And then the very last thing that I just noticed about this yarn is that they do label this as machine washable and machine dryable. So it's actually kind of good to know. I personally, I'm always very hesitant to throw anything in the washer or dryer just because I've had my machines completely screw up my projects and I have to scrap them at the end just because they look so bad after the dryer. But if any of you guys have ever thrown the Lion Brand Wool Ease into your washer and dryer and it's turned out okay, please leave me some comments down below. These are the new yarns that I've picked up. I know it's not a shit ton of yarn. I know it's not like 20 balls, but this was kind of just like my latest find at the store. And now for the rest of the video, I'm just going to be crocheting with you all, letting you all know what's up, what's good. And yeah, you guys can just kind of watch me make a few custom order items. And I think it'd be really fun too at the end of this video to show you guys kind of like cradle to grave with these items. Um, my friend is using them for a personal photo shoot. So I figured it'd be really fun to take you guys along with me on the photo shoot, show you guys what he had in mind with these balaclavas, how he's going to style them himself. And, and yeah, just kind of come along with me, watch me crochet, chat with me. So go ahead, grab any crochet knitting project that you guys are working on right now. Sit down with me, grab your coffee, grab your tea, and let's hang out and chat. All right, so I'm back and I have been working on this balaclava for I wanna say about an hour and a half so far today. And this is what I have come up with. For this balaclava, I am trying to make it a little bit more fitted just because the person only wants their eyes visible. I really want the balaclava to hug their face instead of being kind of droopy and oversized and baggy like my previous ones. So I did create a ribbed band that was a lot shorter than before so that it's nice and snug on the neck. But I think I've gone ahead so far and added about 
10. I'm on the 10th row of working back and forth in the round. So this is what about 10 rows of the balaclava looks like so far. I want to say I have another three or so rows and then I can go ahead and stop and create that little opening for the eye portion. But I'm really liking how this one's turning out. I actually really like the look of the more fitted balaclava. I think it just looks even sexier and even just like more chic and that's exactly what i'm trying to go for so many of you guys said that you've been really enjoying the loops and thread impeccable yarn ever since i posted my last balaclava video you guys have been messaging me telling me that you've all gone to the store to pick this one up and i promise this cute aaron tweed type of pattern does not fail but i hope that everybody's new year has been going so great and so smooth i hope you guys have all made your resolutions and you're ready to just get back into gear and start working our butts off for 2022. I did spend a little bit of time yesterday pulling out my notebook and kind of just taking a minute to literally write down all of the upcoming projects and videos that I have planned for at least January and February. And I have a nice big list going, so I'm really excited. And once I finish up these two balaclava orders, I'm gonna get right back on my grind and start pumping out those videos for you guys. So if there is a specific kind of video that you guys are looking to see from me this year, please let me know down in the comments because I just want to make content that you guys want to watch and content that's going to help you guys out and hopefully teach you some new tips and tricks in 2022 because that's what we're all about here on my channel is teaching and guiding and helping you guys to make the most beautiful gear that you want to wear yourselves. And I'm actually so excited because these last few days Jordan has been helping me edit out my new patchwork cardigan video you guys know the video the one you guys have all been begging me for and asking me for the one where you guys sent me all of your subscriber patches from around the world well i finally got that bad boy all finished up so i'm really excited to get that video out to you guys i'm pretty sure by the time that this video goes live that the patchwork cardigan will already be up on my channel so i'm gonna go ahead link it here this is the thumbnail Go watch that video. I know you guys are going to love it. You guys have been dying and waiting so patiently to see the final cardigan. And honestly, I wore that cardigan out for only one day so far and I got so many compliments. So many different people were asking where I got different patches from, what they are, how I made it. And honestly, even the crowd, even the public loves the patches that you guys made. So I just want to say thank you guys so much again for participating in that subscriber patchwork cardigan project with me and I'm really hoping that later on in this year I can host another one. So if any of you guys out there didn't really get the chance to participate in my first subscriber patchwork then don't worry guys I do plan on hosting another one of these subscriber send in patchwork projects later on this year. If you guys want to participate in my next subscriber send in patchwork kind of project then keep your guys' eyes peeled for that. It will most likely be any time around August or October this year. So I'm really hoping that with an even larger subscriber count that I will have even more people being able to send in things to me this year. And now that you guys kind of know what I'm looking for and the size of the patch that I'm probably going to ask for, you guys can already kind of get a head start on your patches, start planning them out. I can't wait to see how creative you guys get this year. And also very random thought of mine, but does anybody else out there really love that kind of ASMR-y sound of just the yarn running over your needle or running over your hook? Whenever I'm crocheting, my hook is constantly like hitting and running into my rings and it's always making kind of like a very pleasant and calming like ASMR sound. And I thought it'd be really kind of fun to just film kind of like an hour long ASMR video of you guys just watching me crochet. It can be a very silent video, maybe like a rainy day crochet with me kind of video. I don't know if that's weird. So if you guys are on board with an ASMR crochet video, then also let me know down in the comments. I think that'd be a very relaxing and fun video to put together for you guys. Yeah, just random thoughts of mine throughout the day, something I've scribbled in my notebook. A lot of you guys are always telling me that you love putting on my videos and kind of just watching me crochet as you guys have a project 
project to work on because it kind of feels like you have a friend there with you helping you crochet and you don't feel as alone and honestly when I'm crocheting that's exactly what I do I always find some kind of youtuber who's either doing lifestyle or crochet or knitting or just talking about their day and for me it's very therapeutic and it helps me to focus and get my work done a lot sooner so I feel like that'd be a really fun video to put out to you guys that way you guys just have an hour-long buddy to help you crochet and get your projects done let's see if I can kind of give you guys a little example of the crochet sounds that I hear when I'm working did you guys hear that I don't even know if my camera or my mic picked that up at all hi y'all I'm jumping on here real fast to give you a quick little balaclava update because <laughs> you know I got my hair my makeup done right now so I'm looking kind of cute <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> but this is what I have so far with the first balaclava so like I mentioned earlier I do have to leave just the eye portion open here on this balaclava so I just finished that up I measured up against my head and it seems to look just about right I actually just got off of a live stream on YouTube and I realized that in my previous balaclava DIY tutorial that I only really showed you guys one way to make a balaclava which is an entire open face pattern but I thought I would give you guys just a quick rundown on what I've done here with this balaclava just because it is a little bit different so in case you guys are trying to make more of like a ski mask balaclava or you just want yours to have more face coverage after my ribbed band I went ahead and actually added 11 rows of double crochet in the round but like I said with this balaclava it is stopping right atop the bridge of my nose so I have a total of 11 rows of the double crochet and then here for the eye portion after I marked off the two little sections you know to leave my eyes open I did crochet three rows of double crochet along the back side of the balaclava and then from there I just went ahead attached a chain back across the top of the forehead and now I'm just going back in to add those final rows of double crochet and I think with this balaclava I'm actually going to finish the top of the hat by working in the round and just adding a bunch of decreases each row let's go ahead finish this one up and then I can go ahead and start on the second one because I have one day I have one day to finish this and finish the other one is my time management skills up to par Probably not. So I'm working on it, y'all. Let's get to business. So just a quick update on my projects. I accidentally started the next balaclava off camera, but this one is really fun so far to actually work up. Like I mentioned earlier, I am using the Lion Brand Wool Ease Number no. 6 Bulky Yarn to make this second balaclava. And so far, I'm really loving just how thick and bulky this balaclava is turning out. You guys know with my previous balaclavas, they were always like a number four weight, um, worsted weight kind of yarn. So they're a lot more lightweight and almost kind of flimsy, but this thing has so much structure and strength behind it. It's literally just standing up on its own. It kind of looks like a little bowl here. But I actually just wanted to talk you guys through what I'm doing so far with this balaclava. So you probably can't even really tell, but I'm trying a little bit different of like a pattern with this balaclava just because it's so thick. So I figure once I get this whole bad boy worked up, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the entire pattern slash instructions on screen for you guys to follow, just so that you guys have a, another alternative to a balaclava that you guys can make. But so far here with this balaclava, my pattern has changed up to one row of half double crochets and then one row of front loop only slip stitches and I just alter those two back and forth I didn't really want to do front post back post stitches with such a thick bulky yarn so I'm really liking how the ribbing seems a lot more thin a lot more finite but I'm really loving it so far and if you guys couldn't tell I also made my starting chain a lot longer so this is like the entire ribbed section right here super long longer than what i had before and then from there i'm actually just going to be working with half double crochets in the round just to build up over the top of the face so i'm just going to continue to work on this a little bit like i said i have only today to get this bad boy done so 
So originally I pretty much finished up the balaclava and then I decided to try it on last minute just to make sure that it was going to fit and it didn't. So you know I had to tear it out two more times to get the pattern just right but finally I'm coming up here on the last stretch. I'm just trying to close up the top. I think I have like maybe two more rows to go and the entire hat is done but as you guys can see here, I'm actually coming up to the very end of my wire here. So I don't know if I'm going to make it in time, but, but I just kind of want to show you guys what I have so far with this super chunky balaclava. So as you guys can see here, I do have like the little eye opening slit for your eyes and I'm finishing up working in the round with this balaclava. So pretty soon here, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the pattern instructions on screen for you guys. But I won't lie, I have tried this balaclava on a couple times and it looks killer. I'm actually really loving this super bulky, chunky yarn to make these hats. And once I finish stitching up the very top of the balaclava, my client is asking me to go around the eye opening and just add a couple rows of blue accented yarn just to kind of make the eye section pop. So this is what we're working with so far. Looks so cute. This bad boy is pretty darn heavy, pretty thick. So she is almost done and I'll pop back on here in a second just to show you guys what the final balaclava looks like. Ooh, I'm so impressed with myself. I actually finished the very end of this balaclava and this is how much yarn I have left over. So it just goes to show you guys that you can use one skein of Lion Brand Wool Ease to create an entire balaclava. I didn't have to dip into my second skein. So that's pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Finally, finally finished up this balaclava. I'm gonna come in nice and close, but this is what the final product looks like. So like I mentioned, I went in and added just one row of single crochets around like the little eye area. So this is what we're looking like. I really like kind of mixing up. Don't mind that like little tail sticking out right there but I really like mixing up like different weights and thicknesses of yarn. I feel like you get something super unique. I haven't really seen a balaclava quite like this anywhere on Instagram. So I'm very proud of this one. I really like this little touch of color. It just kind of like makes it pop. I love this one so much. So here is the final beauty, I have all my tails tucked in. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, I am going to Jordan and my friend's photo shoot. So I'm gonna get some really awesome product shots of these two balaclavas with him wearing them. 